Hi, welcome to the Market Alert for Monday, the 22nd of May 2023. So stocks and bonds sold after fresh debt and banking woes while Powell is more balanced than peers, according to the statements that he made on Friday at 4pm. Uh, bumper week uh, for banks and big tech, but bonds suffer biggest bloodbath in a year. But Powell, Yellen and McCarthy uh, spoiled the party today uh, on the upside for the Dow particularly, but not so much for the DAX. And the economic news for today, well, it's absolutely nothing. So the market's free to move to the upside. Uh, the rest of the week, let's have a quick look. Uh, we've got uh, the flash news tomorrow. That seems to dominate uh, most of the news. We've got uh, new home sales and uh, Richmond Manufacturing, though, out at uh, 3 p.m. And then uh, UK CPI, which is expected to drop sharply, according to this, uh, 2% drop uh, year on year. Uh, on uh, Wednesday at 7 a.m. So that will be interesting. And then to follow that up, we've got uh, Bailey speaking at uh, 10.30 and 2 p.m. as well. So we'll be hoping those figures uh, come out as uh, forecast at 8.2. That will send the market to the upside and also take the pressure off uh, raising rates. Thursday, what have we got? Prelim, uh, GDP, uh, unemployment gains and um, retail sales. I oh, know that's on Friday for the UK. Um, yeah, so not nothing big. That must be next week. Uh, we're going to uh, bank holiday again next week, don't we? Everybody's off a week today. And then uh, from there, I'm just seeing when we've got the next FOMC. And uh, on a non-farm, non-farm is the week after then. So week after next, we've got the ADP there. And no, nope, there's no... Um, US uh, CPI that's going to be oh no that's the flash estimates so yeah um, looking a bit too far ahead here so why am I doing this well just to see if the market is just free to move higher and there's nothing there to say that it can't uh, barring uh, you know banking crisis and the debt ceiling so yeah uh, nothing today that's uh, all the important thing you can see there so no reason why the market can't continue to move back to the upside for the Dow and also the DAX Speaking of which, let's kick off with the Dow, have a look, see what happened during Friday, and then move our way through all of the other uh, sectors as well. So starting off with the Dow, uh, you can see that uh, Friday we move lower. There was a bit of supply in the market there. At, uh, again, that's 78, 89 as the market attempted to move higher. According to the news, Powell came out, said some things about the debt ceiling and uh, also rates, uh, and that forced the market lower as can be seen by the 30 minute chart there. Uh, this first bar is at 16.30. Powell was speaking at 4 p.m. This sent the market down, which you'll see there. And also uh, overnight, you'll see uh, prices coming back 89% there and then starting to make its way back up. It's important that the market stays above the close and also the 33,500 level as it moves up for, towards uh, 50 points there. There was the 50 bar moving average, the BRN and the DP. If it gets through this, then we've got more or less a clear run because we've only got BRNs to take out. We've got the R1 up here, but so uh, go back to the high um, is uh, not impossible at all because it's only 100 points to there, another 100 to there, and 150 in total up to the high. And in the German DAX, well, we did it on uh, Friday. We moved uh, through the all-time high. Let's have a look at that in the monthly chart. So you can't quite see it there. Let me just see if I can spread this out a bit. You'll see we're just ticking through there at the moment. Uh, just there, just above it at that uh, 60, uh, 16,290. We go back to the daily and uh, you'll see there we're uh, through uh, that uh, level. It's clearer in the 30-minute charts. Just bring this over. We started off in the morning with the market sideways. Uh, we see them buying into the market here. Huge amount of volume at the BRN at uh, the low of uh, Thursday. And then uh, that's it. Uh, but notice uh, that how difficult it was to get through this level. As it can be seen here, you'll see that uh, there was a lot of resistance and it took uh, several hours to actually get through. But when it got through, it blew through, uh, but then didn't hold. Uh, as you'll see there, we had an 89% retracement and the market uh, came back to the high. 
as I've said before, the previous uh, high or day's high, it becomes a support if it's broken to the upside and then markets return. And you'll see there we had 100% retracement and then the market moving higher. Overnight, uh, the markets have uh, moved sharply lower. There was some selling to continue. Uh, but guess what? Uh, the buying came in and we've moved the market back now to 62% and Friday's close. So there's no reason, again, there's no economic news, the debt ceiling and only banking woes would really cause the market to move to the downside. So the market's free to go and break the new all-time high now, which is 16,333. So that's the next upside target. In the five-minute chart for Friday, uh, let's just have a look where the market went through on the all-time high. No, actually, let's go back to... Uh, the start of the day where we saw the market uh, finding support. We had a lot of volume there. This is the first 30 minutes or so. And then moving up, we had a break, we moved up. And then as you'll see, the green line there is the all time high, just below that uh, 16,300. And eventually the market got through. But you can see the increase in volume to drive through. Very, very important. Once you understand how to read volume and price action, you can see how the market then moved up. Then we had a retracement and then we sold off when Powell started to speak there. Market dropping nicely. Overnight, or into the evening rather, we saw the market follow the Dow. But uh, as you can see here, price is continuing to uh, bounce uh, from uh, this level and uh, sitting at the close. Uh, just coming back there uh, below the uh, all-time high, 16,298. It needs to stay above that in order to move higher. And stay above uh, convincingly as well but uh, it's early yet yeah. and it's uh what's well, 6 30 a.m and it's monday morning there's a long way to go before friday at 4 p.m uh, with uh, this market and in the s p 500 also uh, showing a bit of a problem on friday a bit of supply again engineered by powell's comments uh, you can see they're moving up uh, to thursday's high then we retrace and then we uh, sail to the downside and then we've been choppy until uh, overnight when we've seen the market trade back to the DP. At the moment it's not taking it out and it needs to do this in order to move higher. In the FTSE 100, defying uh, the rest of the markets, they're actually moving up to the 78.89 area on Friday when we've got a bit of a retracement coming back to uh, another we draw from here up to here, another 78.89. It's got uh, an issue there with the 20 bar moving average at the moment. So let's have a look at this in more detail. Friday, we see the market retrace a full 100%. Got the volume there. They bought back into the market after the initial selling. The market uh, then making its way up and uh, stopping at the R1. Did actually have a problem with the high as well, but went through with the high of the German DAX and then Powell. Uh, ruin the party with the market coming back as you can see there back and then uh, up overnight uh, we move lower and then we've moved back up uh, as you can see there let me just uh, slide this out the way and have a look at this I think it's the uh, the close isn't it just uh, one second let's just move that out of the way yeah it's the close so the market uh, struggling with uh, friday's close no surprise because if i was to draw in from here to here you'll see that's around 78 percent retracement there as well in the gbp jpy friday this also down a bit of uh, selling there as well above average volume uh, the market uh, could move higher and if so these are the areas of uh, Resistance. Let me just uh, spread this out a bit so we can expand those uh, Fib numbers. So yeah, on the upside, these are the areas of resistance that you would encounter. We're actually below the five bar moving average at the moment. So again, I'd be interested to see how well the market holds on the downside. These would be the targets that I would uh, consider to begin with. In the 30 minute chart, uh, nice move to the upside on Friday, bit of support down here. Uh, in between the low and the S1, which is unusual, uh, but the market then uh, trading up uh, 100 plus points before uh, then uh, retracing and then moving down with Powell's uh, comments there before you see the buying come in. Market sideways and then overnight uh, prices are being just in a sideways range trying to uh, move higher but making no ground. 62-50% uh, retracement is uh, holding prices at this time. In the pound dollar, 
uh, you can see there that uh, we're still stuck in the sideways range at the moment. That's because the dollar is also, which we'll look at in just a moment. And in the Friday trading session, we managed to uh, move up back above the close of Thursday through the DP, uh, which you'll see there. And then sitting on the uh, two averages before we uh, get the all time high in the DAX, the FTSE. So you can see everything sort of squirted up at this point. And uh, then price is uh, coming back to uh, the 200 MA and then uh, making its way back up, but uh, struggling to hold uh, at the moment. So the dollar must be moving back to the upside. There's the close and the DP level there, which the market will need to hold uh, above. So in the dollar index, yes, it's uh, moving back up off the lows uh, overnight. Down on Friday, though, which saw the pound uh, spike to the upside there. So a bit more support coming in. Once the debt ceiling sorted, then the dollar will uh, start moving to the downside. But until that point, it's going to continue to move to the upside. And in the metals, uh, let's kick off with uh, silver. This already being hammered overnight, uh, moving down to uh, the 50% retracement just through that. You've still got the bigger 78 and 89 down here. Also note that uh, 62 and 78 tie in together here on the downside in this uh, retracement. So let's just have a look at that in more detail. Friday, uh, we saw the market uh, move higher, stopped at uh, the high of Thursday and the um, 200 MA was monkey hammered down, stops at the DP in the close and then uh, back to the upside with that news on uh, Friday. And then overnight, we're struggling with the close and also we've taken out the 200 MA as well. So the market free to uh, move and retest uh, the low there, which uh, we can see. It's just drawing some fibs from the last swing. And there's uh, two potential areas of support, 23.60 and 23.55, given that it's a half a cent there. Right, so let's have a look at uh, gold. Uh, this also uh, down on the overnight as well, stuck in a bit of a sideways range at the moment for this. And in the 30 minute charts, uh, this I think is a bad tick uh, there. So we'll just ignore that. Uh, the market uh, moving down overnight, trading towards the DP. So a lot of firmer than silver at the moment. But on Friday, uh, moving to the upside, but then failing to hold, coming back down to the close where we see the buying coming in. And then uh, the market spike into the upside. We again get the retracement tracement after being overbought. And then the market uh, making its way back down overnight, like I say, to the DP at the moment. And finally, in the uh, gold-silver ratio, we can see this is moving back up. That's because uh, silver, if we just go back, have a look at the 30-minute chart, you will see is already below the DP, whereas gold is uh, above it, which we've just observed. And that means that uh, the gold price is uh, stronger than the silver price at the moment. So the ratio moving to the upside there. OK, that uh, will do it for this one. Let's see what happens today. No news today, apart from uh, anything that uh, comes out regarding the debt ceiling or regional banks. So the market's free to move to the upside. And hopefully that uh, the German DAX will hold above the 16,298, which is just slightly below at the moment. Okay, that's it. Uh, as ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.